Hi guys, hope everyone's well and welcome back to the Improvement Podcast. So today I'm going to touch on the relationship between volume and frequency, but beforehand, a quick update on myself. I'm still currently uh, five weeks and two days out from my first show of the season, so getting close now. And uh, things are starting to get a bit more aggressive or a bit, bit harder. We're knuckling down a bit more in terms of what we're doing is getting a bit more aggressive, meaning we're, we've upped cardio. So if you've not seen my Instagram post, I have a check-in basically once a week and then a wee midweek check-in where I send my coach a voice note. Uh, my coach being AJ, if you don't know him, AJ Morris. And uh, in terms of like the updates this week, midweek we've made a few changes and we've basically increased cardio from 35 minutes on a rest day to doing two 35 minute intervals so 70 minutes in total on rest day and added 2,500 steps daily so that's me now at 15,000 steps a day and uh, 12,500 steps a day so uh, when you made the change to be honest it's obviously it's a bit brutal you know what I mean just hearing you've got to do that but at the same time it's exciting and if I'm wanting to place well, if I'm wanting to stand out and hold my own in the show and, yeah, place well, then I've got to come in in condition and I want to not just turn up, if that makes sense. So it's part of it and what you've got to do, I guess. Uh, so, yeah, everything's going well apart from that. And the reason we made the changes is weight's not dropped a ton this week, so it made sense the week to do so. I'm visually a bit sharper, but he wants me in good condition for my first show of the season so I'm in safe hands so whatever he says then I'll do basically because he knows what he's doing so yeah jumping into the episode in regards to the relationship between volume and frequency so first of all I'm going to establish what is each so volume is basically the amount of sets you do for a muscle group Uh, so an example is like uh, if you do volume it's hard to actually quantify volume because tons of things impact volume <clears throat> so for example if you do five sets and uh, your sets have no control on the way down they are not to failure they have you're bouncing at the bottom then that's going to be different than five sets that are to complete failure where you're controlling it with your muscle for the full range of motion you're controlling the way down uh they're gonna that's they're gonna have different like effects on your level of soreness how much you get from the movement how much you get from the sets and also your form so if you're not doing a movement in a way that's gonna work the right muscle group then that's gonna yes you're still doing five sets for your chest but if you're not targeting your chest well, then it's going to be a different amount of volume. So it's hard to really quantify how much is a certain amount of volume. It's not always equal. Uh, and also there's things like being at isolation or compound movement. So doing two sets on the leg extension is going to be more taxing than doing two sets on the leg press. They're not created equal. They're going to have different levels of fatigue. They're going to have different effects on your performance for the rest of the session as a result of it and uh, you can get away with let's say adding on two sets at the end of your session but if you add two sets of let's say leg press then that's gonna be a lot more brutal if that makes sense same with like your arm work adding two sets of biceps on the end of legs isn't going to be that taxing however adding two sets of leg press on the end of your upper body day is going to be taxing for example so not all volumes equal they have different effects depending on the exercise depending on yeah many things like that but in this case we're not going to look into it that deeply Uh, it doesn't matter that much Uh, what matters is like whatever you're doing is the same if that makes sense which I'll get to but basically yeah volume let's say you're running a let's say Right now we'll think about it as if like they're running an upper lower split. So upper lower rest and upper lower. And uh, yeah, so volume is basically the amount of sets you do per muscle group throughout the week. And frequency is how often you train a body part. So 
if you're let's say doing an upper lower split you're doing let's say upper lower rest upper lower and then two rest days and then back to monday you're doing upper then you're training your upper body two times a week frequency and your lower body two times a week frequency you could argue you're doing sorry there's i'm not sure if i said three there so two times a week frequency each body part however if you're training let's say i if you're doing a deadlift variation on your lower body day you could say that's going to involve about your back which could mean you're training your back three times a week frequency so in other words every like yeah if you're training two to three times a week then what this will basically mean is you will not be able to do as much volume each session the two are linked together we can't consider volume without considering frequency they both need to be taken into consideration and the reason being is if we think about it if we're training like high volume meaning doing a lot of sets each session to failure let's say all the sets are to failure they're now just so it's nice and clear what I'm trying to explain and we're also training high frequency as well as high volume then we're not going to be able to recover for example if you're training legs three times a week and doing an absolute ton of sets each leg day then your legs are going to be absolutely battered by the time it's at the next session they're not going to be recovered in time they're not going to be sore and what will that mean that will mean yeah poor recovery which means poor progress as you won't be able to recover in time to progress and perform well you won't be able to yeah, recover in time which means injury risk could be higher because you're going into sessions with still a lot of soreness and basically battering your legs so yeah they both can't really be high as a result of it or your recovery will be poor and the opposite stands so if both are really low let's say you're only doing legs once a week and you're doing very very low amount of sets then you could say you could potentially be getting away with doing more you could potentially be getting a lack of progress out of your training when you could be getting more progress uh, so that's something to consider because if you're doing like i said like let's say you're doing three sets for your quads then if you do that once a week you're not doing a lot to tax your quads to stimulate them to grow so you're probably not going to progress as much as possible whereas let's say you did do you you trained legs three times a week and you've done three sets of quad three times a week then that's going to basically mean you'll stimulate your quads to grow they'll recover you can stimulate them to grow and they'll recover and you can stimulate them to grow uh, so yeah that would basically be what you want to do you don't want to have high volume and high frequency or you don't want to have low volume and low frequency you want high like to do a decent amount of volume if you're not training your body parts frequent or vice versa you want to do less volume if you're training them more frequently so you can recover in time for your following sessions so in terms of what's better for progress doing let's say a lot of volume for a body part let's say doing chest or no we'll stick with legs actually because they're a good example because you usually get a bit more sore so what's going to be better for progress doing legs let's say we're training our quads when i say legs we're just talking about our quads the now the front of our legs or in other words our thighs what do you think will grant you faster progress doing nine sets once a week or three sets three times a week don't can let's not consider here like your upper body or fitting it in or how your split will look just think about if you can train your quads three times a week and you can basically progress movements you can recover progress them again and recover and then train them again and progress it again if you can train three times a week is that going to give you a better outcome than training your legs once a week and doing nine sets in total and my opportunity the three times a week is in is going to be better uh, so take this with a pinch of salt because i appreciate three times a week for legs might be pushing it but i'm just trying to give you an example and kind of exaggerate it slightly a more realistic way would be doing it two times a week uh, but yeah if you think about it if we're training a body part three times a week 
we're giving ourselves three opportunities to stimulate the muscle group for the muscle to adapt to grow to get stronger and then we can repeat that another two times so if you think about it if we can do a set on monday we can like let's say we're doing squats we can do a hundred for nine and then we can go in on the wednesday and do a hundred for ten and then on the friday we can do a hundred for let's say eleven we can progress three times that session or sorry we can progress our squat three times that week and give the give ourselves like i said three opportunities to progress uh, stimulate the muscle group to grow uh, that's going to give you a better outcome in my opinion than doing let's say all your sets on one day because if you think about it if you do all your sets on one day think about what the last set of legs will look like think about let's say you do one set for three exercises or on the other hand let's say you do three sets for three exercises you'd be doing the three sets if you obviously train that body part one times a week think about what your last set for that body part will be like you'll probably not be able to perform well because you've already done eight sets if you do all your sets in one session for that body part whereas if you split up into three days your third set is your last set so you're still going to be able to perform really well because you've not already done a lot of sets which means overall the amount of weight you can lift throughout the week is going to be higher so i hope that makes sense Basically what I'm saying is if we split our training up so we're not training a body part once a week, we're training it let's say three times, we're splitting those sets that we do in that one session into three, our final set we're going to be fresher, we're going to be able to perform better because we've not already done eight sets, we're not going to be battered from doing eight sets of legs already. So yeah, that's the benefit of basically training a body part a bit more frequently and uh of course, you want to make sure you recover in time for each session. But yeah, in my opinion, if you've got a weak body part, it's very valuable training a body part more frequently. But bear in mind, you need to do less sets each session if you're going to do so. So if training once a week, you can get away with doing more work, like I said. So if you are training legs once a week, then you wouldn't want to do three sets a session. You'd want to do more because you can get away with doing more work and recovering time for your next session. Uh, for example, if you're training legs only one day a week, you've got six days to recover until your next leg day. So you can do more, be sore, and there won't be an issue. Uh, so yeah, that's something to bear in mind with your training, your programming as well. And if you are doing, let's say, a body part once a week, you can get away with more sets, like I said. You can also do high intensity techniques like drop sets, rest pause sets, things like that, partial reps a bit more. Uh, and on the other hand, if you are training body parts frequently, like I said, your overall volume each session will have to be lower. So you can't do nine sets for your legs if you're training them in two days maybe. Or if you're training them, let's say, you've only got one day in between your leg days. If you've got one rest day, then you can't do as much. The total sets you'll do in the session will be less. You'll probably be doing less high intensity techniques. And... Uh, some body parts will handle both, meaning let's say your arms, your side delts, your calves. They can usually handle a, quite a lot of volume without getting re reasonably sore. So you could probably get away with doing, let's say, a lot of sets for your arms. Let's say four sets of biceps and doing that three times a week. You can probably get away with that, no problem at all. Or even more, uh, because your arms don't really yeah carry much soreness they recover very fast without being tired going into following sessions so that's something to consider so if you've got let's say body parts that are weak like your arms you want to bring your arms up then don't be afraid to train them multiple times a week if you can train them let's say three times a week then do so and don't be afraid to do quite a few sets because they're kind of the one exception things like arms side delts they recover quicker sometimes calves Usually the smaller muscle groups, they recover quicker. So, like I said, what's better, you never truly know, but in theory, if you can split your training up so you're not training, let's say, legs once a week or chest once a week, you can basically hit the body part more frequently, 
giving it more opportunities to grow. So I recommend maybe instead of doing, let's say, chest once a week, splitting your sets up, doing it twice a week, doing, let's say, upper, lower, upper, lower, instead of just, let's say, chest, back, then biceps, or let's say, chest, back, arms and legs. I recommend doing, let's say, an upper, lower split for that reason. And uh, yeah, like I said, it will give you more opportunities to stimulate the muscle group, more opportunities for it to grow. And overall, your last set of the session will be better. Another example is, let's say, just to make sure I'm putting it across right, let's say, let's take the bench press, for example. Let's say you do an upper lower split and you, on the upper lower split, you do upper body and you do the barbell bench press. Let's say you do three sets of it. And then you do that again later on in the week. What do you think you're going to do better on? Your third set on each of those sessions, do you think you'll be able to lift more weight for more reps than your sixth set if you've done them all in one session? If you're doing them all to failure, you're obviously going to be a lot more tired and a lot weaker on that sixth set if you've done it all in one session than the third set if you split them up into two. So overall, we know what, what causes muscle growth. Mechanical tension, which basically means the amount of weight we can put on a muscle. So if over the week we can find a way to basically put more more weight on that muscle, we can lift more weight for more reps and it's going to grow more effectively in my opinion. So yeah, I hope this made sense. It's quite hard to put across. Uh, it's quite could potentially confusing, but basically what we want to consider is when we're deciding how much work to do in each session, how much sleeps do you have until you're going to train it next? If you've got, let's say, six sleeps until your next leg day, you can get away with doing more for your legs. If you've got two sleeps f until your next leg day, you can't get away with doing as much for your legs and you might want to do less volume uh, so you recover in time for the next session. So that's basically the relationship between volume and frequency. Basically, the higher your frequency, the less volume you can do each session and like vice versa, if you do a lot of volume, you can't train a body part as frequent. So yeah, hope this helped. Any questions, please ask. If you are enjoying the podcast, you listen to it regularly, then please leave me a rating. You can do so on Spotify and also on Apple. If you listen to it on YouTube, please give it a like, subscribe, and uh, share it on your story if you want to help spread the word in regard to the podcast. So thank you very much for listening and hope everyone